dear students this is dr s m indumathi assistant professor from the department of biotechnology school of bio and chemical engineering satibama institute of science and technology today i am here for a presentation about sexually transmitted diseases so we'll first look into the introduction sexually transmitted diseases or sexually transmitted infections stds or stis are infections that spread from one person to another person through sexual contact they are spread by uh, bacteria viruses or other parasites they are highly contagious which means they spread rapidly and effectively there are uh, nearly 20 different types of sexually transmitted diseases and uh, few are listed here like chlamydia genital herpes gonorrhea aids that's caused by hiv hpv human papilloma virus infections syphilis as well as trichomoniasis which is caused by trichomonas vaginalis in us around 25 million cases are reported every year in case of sexually transmitted diseases on a global scale it's around 374 million cases every year it is recorded and uh, according to the reports of center center for disease control and prevention in us in the year 2021 2.5 million cases of syphilis gonorrhea as well as chlamydia cases were recorded all the patients were between the ages 15 to 24 today we are going to look into two types of sexually transmitted diseases uh, both are bacterial the first one is gonorrhea and the second one is syphilis so gonorrhea Gonorrhea uh, is a venereal disease which means it's a sexually transmitted disease that's acquired through sexual contact the causative agent is Neisseria gonorrhoeae which is a kidney shaped diplococci which means the cocci exists in pairs the infection starts when the cocci starts to adhere to the urethral surfaces as well as the mucosal surfaces the adhesion happens by uh, pili and the adhesion is so firm that even micturition after exposure does not even clear the bacteria from the urethral surfaces micturition means the process of urination the organism Uh, i mean uh, has an incubation period the infection has an incubation period of 2 to 8 days the organism starts to spread into the intercellular spaces and reach the connective tissues in just 3 days in men the symptoms start with acute urethritis with mucopurulent discharge which contains the gonococci in larger numbers the infection continues to the epididymis seminal vesicles as well as the prostate glands chronic urethritis leads to stricture formation and the spread of infection is seen to the periurethral surfaces abscesses and multiple discharging sinuses and this condition is called water can perineum in case of women the bacteria is seen confined to urethra as well as the cervix uteri cervix uteri is a region that connects the urethra as well as the vagina uh, vagina is generally uh, spared which means no infection is seen in vagina because the squamous epithelial cells of vagina resist the cocci as well as the acidic ph of vagina will uh, actually destroy the cocci from inhabiting this place uh, in case of pre pubertal girls vulvo vaginitis is a common symptom in case of adult women pelvic inflammatory disease that is the inflammation or infection of all the reproductive organs as well as salpingitis the infection of fallopian tubes is very common and both these condition leads to sterility the infection spreads to the bartholin glands endometrium as well as the fallopian tubes in case of women the severity of gonorrhea is generally less but in case of men it is not that case and women could be asymptomatic too which means they just harbor the organisms the cocci in their uh, urethral region but they won't produce any clinical disease but men are always infected severely by this kind of gonorrheal infections and this is a image of uh, neisseria gonorrhoeae the small spots which are seen here are actually the organisms and the other or This is actually an image of uh, a smear, uh, a, 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 an urethral smear, which contains the organisms which are actually a diplococci, and the reference for the image is given below. Other manifestations of the infection: proctitis is very common in both the sexes, that's men and uh, women. Uh, in women, it is through direct spread, but in men, it is through uh, anal sex. And conjunctivitis is also a common type of infection, but especially it is through auto inoculation of the patient's fingers. And blood invasion by the organisms lead to other metastatic lesions like arthritis, 
ulcerative endocarditis which means uh, ulceration seen in the internal lining of the heart region and uh, meningeal involvement is a bit rare. Pyemia is also a complication of uh, gonorrhea. And non-venereal infection generally occurs through congenital transfer from mother to fetus. Generally, uh, in this case, the infection would be gonococcal ophthalmia, which means the organisms generally affects the fetus's eyes. And uh, bacteremia, the circulation of gonococci in blood will lead to certain conditions like papules and pustules which are seen on uh, forearms, legs as well as uh, other skin regions and we have uh, tenosynovitis. Tenosynovitis is the inflammation of the tendon shear which connects the muscles to the bones as well as separative arthritis which uh, affects the knees, wrists as well as uh, the ankle bones. Around 95% of the strains of gonococci is composed of different plasmids uh, and one is a cryptic plasmid which does not have any function and other two are transmissible plasmids. Uh, these two plasmids are responsible for the production of the enzyme beta-lactamase and this beta-lactamase would actually uh, confer resistance to the organisms against antibiotics like penicillin. And uh, the treatment for uh, gonorrhea. Uh, sulfonamides were given in early days after sulfonamide resistance developed in gonococci. Penicillin in high doses were given. That's around 2.4 million to 4.8 million international units were actually given. But as I said earlier, the organisms were able to produce the enzyme beta-lactamase. The organisms started to develop resistance to all beta-lactam antibiotics. So after penicillin, it was, uh, I mean, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, USA, they, they suggested the following drug dosage regime for this disease and which is ceftriaxone 125 mg as a single dose intramuscularly along with ciprofloxacin 500 mg or aflaxacin 400 mg plus doxycycline 100 mg. This will be given twice a day for 7 days or it could be erythromycin 1 gram as a single dose. So next we will uh, see about syphilis. Syphilis is also a venereal disease and it could be also acquired non-venerally as well. The causative agent of syphilis is Tryponema pallidum which is a gram-negative spiral shaped uh, organisms which could be commonly called as a spirochete. The origin of the infection is unknown actually but uh, the term syphilis came from a poem which was written by Fracastorius who had mentioned about a shepherd named syphilis who actually got the disease but since its inception syphilis has become a widespread infection of humans. So the infection starts to spread uh, through the wound infections and ab abrasions on the skin. The infectivity level of the patients would be very high during the early two years of infection but after five years the risks become very minimal. The infective dose that is the amount of bacilli required for infection would be very less it's just 60 bacilli would infect around 50 human volunteers. The generation time of this bacteria is just 30 to 33 minutes. Clinical infection sets in within one month uh, but generally the incubation period is 10 to 90 days. The clinical manifestations of syphilis uh, is divided into three stages, primary, secondary and tertiary stages. So primary stage, the primary infection stage starts with a characteristic lesion called canker. This canker is generally present on the genital area. Apart from the genital area, uh, cankers could be seen on mouth as well as nipples. Canker is nothing but uh, indurated superficial ulcerated lesion which is uh, avascular and circumscribed. It is painless as well. Avascular means uh, there are no blood vessels and uh, circumscribed it means it is restricted to a particular limit which means the canker has a definite size and uh, it is indurated. Indurated means it is very hard and this canker is called as hard canker which is actually uh, named to differentiate it from the soft sores which are developed by Haemophilus ducreae as well as Hunterian cankers which is named after a person called John Hunter who induced the disease into himself to prove the evolution of the disease. The regional lymph nodes that are present in the genital area become swollen and it would be draining and uh, the spirochetes enter the bloodstream which means 
before the canker is seen, even before the canker is formed, the spirochetes invade the bloodstream and the patient becomes infective during the late incubation period as well. Uh, this canker contains a thick, glary exudate. And uh, this canker resolves naturally in just 10 to 40 days. But people who have coexisting uh, diseases like HIV, they do not uh, get this canker cured that easily and uh, it takes a longer time as well as they'll have multiple cankers on their body. Then we go to secondary uh, infection, secondary stage. The secondary stage starts after three months from the primary infection and this is generally asymptomatic. The characteristic lesions in secondary stage of syphilis starts due to the blood invasion by this uh, organism. Uh, it starts with roseolar or papillolar skin rashes, mucus patches in the oropharynx. Mucus patches are nothing but erosive skin lesions which contains pus as well as some condylometa. Condylometa is nothing but uh, bumps or genital warts they say. Uh, so they are small uh, bump like pimple like kind of uh, uh, structures which contains pus which, uh, and it will be seen on the genital organs. So these are characteristic lesions of secondary syphilis. Along with this, osseous, ophthalmic and meningeal involvement is seen. And this canker also naturally heals but at times it takes a longer time and the organism, the spirochete is found in large numbers in the swabs. Then we go to uh, latent stage. After the secondary stage of syphilis, the infection enters a quiescent stage called the latent stage uh, during which the diagnosis of syphilis would be only through serological processes. After the latent stage, we go to the tertiary stage. Rarely or uh, occasionally syphilis enters this tertiary stage after uh, so many years actually. Here cardiovascular symptoms follows in this tertiary stage of syphilis which include aneurysms. Aneurysms means uh, ballooning and inflammations of the iota and chronic granulometa. This is a condition where the phagocytes or the, I mean or the macrophages which are unable to perform phagocytosis. That is macrophages will not be able to affect any bacteria or viruses. This case is gra chronic granulometa and meningovascular manifestations is also seen here. And in case of neurological uh, syphilis, manifestations like Tapes dorsalis and general paralysis follows. Tapes dorsalis is a condition where the uh, nerve cells and the nerve fibers start to degenerate and this condition is called as late tertiary or quaternary syphilis. In case of non-venereal syphilis, the infection is generally occupational which means uh, from doctors and nurses it, start to, uh, it starts to spread to uh, others like the canker will be generally seen on fingers but not the genital areas. Uh, rarely syphilis spreads through uh, blood transfusion also where there is no canker seen at all. Congenital syphilis is a case where the mother transfects uh, the fetus in her womb and especially a mother who is in her early stage of syphilis will infect the fetus in her womb for around 75 to 95 percent whereas a woman who is in her late stage of syphilis will just uh, have an infection rate of 35 percent and uh, the symptoms of syphilis the lesions the characteristic lesions start to develop only after the fourth month of gestation when the immune competence from the fetuses has started to develop this indicates that uh, an infection of syphilis actually requires immune response from the fetus. This is uh, an image of Treponema pallidum under the microscope and women, I mean uh, and uh, fetus which escape all the infections inside the womb, sometimes they would be born as a healthy child or there might be abortions and stillbirths in pregnant women. So coming to the treatment of syphilis, penicillin was uh, effective in earlier stages. Uh, it was uh, initially given in smaller doses, but on later stages it was uh, given in like 2.4 million international units as a single injection of benzathine penicillin G. Especially in the early cases of uh, syphilis it would be given. In case of later stage of syphilis, that is the developed stage of syphilis, uh, this benzathine penicillin G would be given every week for three days the same dose and people who are uh, allergic to penicillin would be given with uh, erythromycin or tetracycline. In case of neural syphilis, ceftriaxone would be a drug of choice 
and penicillin treatment in some people would cause uh, a condition called jarish hexema reaction whose symptoms are actually fever malaise and exacerbation of symptoms so the the treatment for this particular condition would be bed rest as well as aspirin so uh, we have reached the conclusive slide thank you students for patiently watching this presentation